Reproduction is an essential life process which not only helps in survival of species but also helps in continuity of that race. Sexual reproduction is a biological process by which organisms create descendants through the combination of genetic material. Human male and female each has its own kind of reproductive system which is represented by some organs, accessory ducts and certain glands. The sperm and the ovum are highly specialized haploid cells which are formed in male and female body respectively. Fusion of these two distinct gametes, sperm and ovum, leads to form a zygote. Zygote turns into embryo. This embryo has a complete set of genetic material from two donors. As an embryo matures, it starts to turn into a recognizable form which is referred to as a fetus. Fetus grows into human baby. Thus, the significance of sexual reproduction in human as well as other living beings is highly profound. Hello students. We saw the fusion of sperm and ovum to give birth to a human baby. Which systems in our body are responsible to produce these gametes? What are the anatomical structures or organs involved in their production? You know the sperm, that is male gamete, and the ovum, that is female gamete, are highly specialized haploid cells which are formed in male and female bodies respectively. Ajde is part which a si male reproductive system di sanachana bare vichar karange. Is system which kede kede ang hunde han, ate e kis tara kam karde han. Aj asi is sabnu janange. The male reproductive tract consists of external genitals and internal organs. It includes gonads, accessory ducts, and some glands. Gonads in male means a pair of testes. Testes produce gametes and hormones. Ajde part which me tuhanu ek human male de reproductive organs, reproductive ducts, at the accessory glands bare dasangi. The male reproductive system is located in pelvic region. A sex organs at the accessory glands da ejeha system hai, jo ki sperms the formation, storage, nourishment at the conduction which efficient hai. Ao, pehla male primary sex organs at the accessory ducts bare discuss kariye. Jive ki asi padya hai ki sade sharir de sare systems, pawe o male de hove ja female de. लगभग इको जेहे ऑर्गन से बने हुंदे हन पर ए गल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम उते लागू नहीं हुंदी मेल अते फीमेल विच ए सिस्टम्स बिल्कुल वखरे हुंदे हन इथे एक गल बहुत ही रोचक है कि एहे दोवे सिस्टम्स मेल रिप्रोडक्टिव अते फीमेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम्स जन्म तो ही अपने कार्जा उसी तरीके नाल शुरू नहीं कर दे जिमे की डाइजेस्टिव अते रेस्पिरेटरी सिस्टम अपना काम जन्म तो ही शुरू कर दिंदे हन मतलब इना दे काम शुरू करन दी एक स्टेज हुंदी है पावे ए सिस्टम साडे सारेया कोल जन्म दे समय तो ही हुंदा है पर इस दा कारज उदो ही शुरू हुंदा है जदो कि असी प्यूबर्टी स्टेज विच पुजदे हां बच्चों ए रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम पावे दोनों सेक्सेस विच वखरा हुंदा है पर हां इना विच 
ਕੁਝ ਗੱਲਾਂ ਮੇਲ ਖਾਂਦੀਆਂ ਹਨ ਪ੍ਰਜਨਨ ਵਿਧੀ ਵਿਅਕਤੀ ਦੇ ਜੀਵਿਤ ਰਹਿਣ ਲਈ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੀ ਨਹੀਂ ਪਰ ਇਹ ਜਾਤੀਆਂ ਨੂੰ ਜਾਂ ਵੰਸ਼ ਨੂੰ ਜੀਵਿਤ ਰੱਖਣ ਲਈ ਜ਼ਰੂਰੀ ਹੈ ਅਤੇ ਇਸ ਦਾ ਵਿਅਕਤੀ ਦੀ ਜ਼ਿੰਦਗੀ ਤੇ ਡੂੰਗਾ ਪ੍ਰਭਾਵ ਹੈ ਹੋਰ ਜੀਵਾਂ ਦੀ ਤਰ੍ਹਾਂ ਇਨਸਾਨ ਵੀ ਆਪਣੇ ਕੁਝ ਲੱਛਣਾਂ ਨੂੰ ਆਪਣੇ ਜੀਨਸ ਰਾਹੀਂ ਆਪਣੇ ਬੱਚਿਆਂ ਵਿੱਚ ਪਾਸ ਕਰਦਾ ਹੈ ਇਹ ਜੀਨਸ ਪਿਤਾ ਦੇ ਸਪਰਮ ਅਤੇ ਮਾਤਾ ਦੇ ਐਗ ਤੋਂ ਆਉਂਦੇ ਹਨ ਜੋ ਕਿ ਮੇਲ ਅਤੇ ਫੀਮੇਲ ਰੀਪ੍ਰੋਡਕਟਿਵ ਸਿਸਟਮਸ ਰਾਹੀਂ ਬਣਦੇ ਹਨ The functions of the human reproductive system are manifold. The male's reproductive role is to manufacture male gametes called sperms and transfer them to the female reproductive tract. It also produces sex hormones mainly testosterone that affects sexual behavior along with the development and function of this system. ਇਸ ਵਿੱਚ ਬਹੁਤ ਸਾਰੇ ਮਹੱਤਵਪੂਰਨ ਆਰਗਨਸ ਗਲੈਂਡਸ ਅਤੇ ਡਕਟਸ ਹੁੰਦੇ ਹਨ ਅਸੀਂ ਇੱਕ ਇੱਕ ਕਰਕੇ ਇਸ ਪ੍ਰਣਾਲੀ ਦੇ ਸਾਰੇ ਪਹਿਲੂਆਂ ਬਾਰੇ ਜਾਣਾਂਗੇ ਲੈਟ ਅਸ ਟੇਕ ਦ ਹੈਲਪ ਆਫ ਸਮ ਵਿਜ਼ੂਅਲਸ ਟੂ ਲਰਨ ਅਬਾਊਟ ਈਚ ਪਾਰਟ ਆਫ ਮੇਲ ਰੀਪ੍ਰੋਡਕਟਿਵ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਦ ਮੇਲ ਰੀਪ੍ਰੋਡਕਟਿਵ ਸਿਸਟਮ ਇਜ਼ ਲੋਕੇਟਿਡ ਇਨ ਦ ਪੇਲਵਿਕ ਰੀਜਨ ਟੈਸਟਿਸ ਆਰ ਅ ਪੇਅਰ of primary sex organs each testis lies in a pouch known as scrotum the scrotum helps in maintaining the low temperature of the testis here you can see how testis actually look like testis are oval soft smooth and pinkish Each testis is 4.5 to 5 cm long, 2 to 3 cm wide, 2 to 3 cm thick. Each testis is surrounded by a long, narrow, highly coiled compact tubule known as epididymis which lies on upper, lower and back sides of testis each testis is formed of numerous small lobules known as testicular lobules this is one testicular lobule each testicular lobule contains highly coiled tubes known as seminiferous tubules each seminiferous tubule is around 70 to 80 cm long each seminiferous tubule join to form some straight ducts called tubuli recti which enter a network of channels called rete testis some fine tubules called vasa efferentia connect rete testis with epididymis duct of epididymis continues into vas deferens these are seminal vesicles a pair of sac like gland present near the base of bladder the ducts join the vasa deferens to form ejaculatory ducts these are bulbo urethral glands also known as corpus glands these are two small rounded p-shaped bodies they are composed of several lobules held together by a fibrous covering this is prostrate gland it is a large grayish brown gland which surrounds urethra its secretion also forms the major portion of semen secretion from this gland is essential for sperm activity if we look at cross sectional view of one seminiferous tubule 
outermost layer is germinal epithelium. The region outside the seminiferous tubules is called interstitial space which contains blood vessels and interstitial cells or Leydig cells. These Leydig cells secrete testicular hormone called testosterone. Cells of germinal epithelium produce spermatogonia. Spermatogonia grow into spermatids. मैनु उम्मीद है कि मेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम के स्ट्रक्चरल एस्पैक्ट बारे तुसी काफ़ी कुछ सीख लिया है हूँ अगे वन तो पहला क्यों ना कुछ सवाल पूछ ले जान क्वेश्चन नेम द पाउच लाइक स्ट्रक्चर इन विच टेस्ट इज लाइ आंसर ईच टेस्ट इज लाइज इन अ पाउच नोन एज स्क्रॉटम नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन By what name a male gamete is known? Answer: A male gamete is known as spermatozoan. The next question is: Where are seminiferous tubules present, and what is the function of these tubules? Answer: Seminiferous tubules are testicular lobules present in a testis. They are the main sites. where sperms are produced the next question is which cells produce testosterone answer interstitial cells or leydig cells present in interstitial space between seminiferous tubules secrete testicular hormone called testosterone the next question is Name various male accessory genital glands. Answer: Seminal vesicles, prostate gland, and bulbourethral glands or corpus glands are the glands present in male reproductive system. Here is the male reproductive system bare jaan kari. Male reproductive system which discuss ki the structures to alawa. पीनस स्क्रॉटम ही अजिहे इकले ऑर्गन्स हैं जो कि एक्सटर्नली लोकेटेड होंगे हैं स्क्रॉटम विच टेस्टीज प्रेजेंट होंगी है द एक्सटर्नल लोकेशन ऑफ द टेस्टीज इज सिग्निफिकेंट बिकॉज स्पर्म डिवेलपमेंट प्रोसेस रिक्वायर्स अ स्लाइटली कूलर टेम्परेचर दैन बॉडी टेम्परेचर एज फार एज फंक्शनल एस्पेक्ट ऑफ दिस सिस्टम इज कंसर्न इट परफॉर्म्स two major functions production of sperms and secretion of androgens testosterone is the main androgen produced by testis in fact manufacture of mature sperms begins in germinal cells of the seminiferous tubules and the complete process of the production of spermatozoa within testis is known as spermatogenesis let us see how sperms are produced from spermatogenia means male germ cells or primordial germ cells if we see a sectional view of this testis where seminiferous tubules are compactly arranged two types of cells are visible primordial germ cells or male germ cells and a mass of supporting cells known as sertoli cells sertoli cells provide nutrition to developing sperms during the growth of a male child primordial germ cells start taking the form of sperm mother cells or spermatogonia until the boy reaches puberty these cells remain in dormant state between the age of 13 to 16 real spermatogenesis 
begins when the hypothalamus starts releasing gonadotropin releasing hormone you know these hormones are necessary for further development of sperms so when a boy reaches the age of puberty due to repeated mitotic division in these primordial germ cells the number of spermatogonia become quite large during normal progression of division events some of these spermatogonia stop dividing they grow in size and known as primary spermatocytes till this stage they have got diploid number of chromosomes primary spermatocytes now undergo first meiotic division and produce secondary spermatocytes as we know that first division of meiosis is a reductional division and each secondary spermatocyte contains half the number of chromosomes till this stage they are still round shaped cells immediately second meiotic division takes place and these secondary spermatocytes undergo the second meiotic division to produce four equal haploid cells known as spermatids these spermatids do not divide further rather undergo some structural changes this process of transformation of spermatids into spermatozoa is known as spermiogenesis each spermatid now undergoes a sequence of changes to get converted into a mature spermatozoan once spermatozoa are formed they move through a system of ducts to store in epididymis until they are eventually released from the body now as we are talking about spermiogenesis means transformation of spermatids into spermatozoa let us try to understand it with the help of animation spermiogenesis a spermatid is non motile and heavy it has organelles like mitochondria golgi bodies centriole and nucleus the golgi complex secretes vesicles which then merge into a larger formation acrosome this formation settles close to cell nucleus and finally inverts itself like a cap over the largest part of the nucleus pair of centrioles helps to form the neck future exonemal structure is formed from distal centriole mitochondria reorganize themselves around proximal part of flagellum mid piece formed of centriole extends into the tail nucleus and acrosome form the head of spermatozoan after this stage sperm head become embedded in the sertoli cells which provide nutrients to these newly formed spermatozoa students do you know what triggers the formation of these sperms actually spermatogenesis starts at the age of puberty due to significant increase in secretion of gonadotropin releasing hormone by the hypothalamus this gonadotropin releasing hormone acts at the anterior pituitary gland this triggers secretion of two gonadotropins luteinizing hormone that is lh 
or interstitial cell stimulating hormone that is ICSH and follicle stimulating hormone that is FSH. This interstitial cell stimulating hormone acts on interstitial cells or Leydig cell to produce testosterone. This hormone is essential for formation of sperms. Once these sperms are formed, they are passed into highly coiled mass of seminiferous tubules. Let us discuss the structure of one spermatozoan. Structure of one spermatozoan. Spermatozoa are composed of mainly four structures. Head, which is composed of acrosome and nucleus. Neck, which is very short and composed of two centrioles. Middle piece consists of mitochondria coiled around the axoneme. Mitochondria provide energy for flagellar movement. The tail consists of axial filament. When fully formed, spermatozoa enter into the lumen of seminiferous tubules from where they are drained into reta testes. From the reta testes, they are pushed into epididymis, a highly convoluted tube that finally drains into vas deferens. Vas deferens carry these sperms to seminal vesicle. Here, these glands store the sperms and add certain secretions which increase sperm's motility. Students, you know how many sperms are produced per functional testis? A fully functional testis normally achieved by the age of 16 has the capacity to produce over 200 million sperms each day. As we saw in animation, sperms undergo final maturation and are stored in seminal vesicle until required. Between the seminiferous tubules and the penis, there are a number of ducts and glands which play an important role in sperm's journey. Secretion from these glands and ducts combine to form semen. Although we have already discussed these ducts while discussing morphology of the system, let us see them once again. Accessory duct The male sex accessory ducts include rete testes, vasa efferentia, epididymis and vas deferens. Let's see how all these are connected to each other. The seminiferous tubules of the testis open into vasa efferentia through reti testis. The vasa efferentia leave the testis and open into epididymis located on the top of each testis. Duct of epididymis leads to vas deferens. Seminal vesicle also sends a duct which joins vas deferens. Vas deferens finally opens into urethra as ejaculatory duct. Ejaculatory ducts enter prostrate gland, pass through it and join the prostrate urethra to produce single urinogenital duct. Urethra. The male urethra provides a common pathway for the flow of urine and semen. It is a tubular duct which originates from tip of penis by a urinogenital aperture or penile meters. It is 19 to 20 centimeter long. The urethra is the final section 
of the duct system. It passes from the urinary bladder and the ends of the ejaculatory ducts through the prostrate gland and into the penis. Penis. It is cylindrical, erectile organ which forms the external genitalia of male. It is covered by a loose fold of skin called foreskin. Penis carries both urine and semen. It helps in copulation. This was all about male reproductive system. Let us summarize what we have learnt about it. Sare Sajeev Prajanan Kardehan Ehi ik ajihi kiriya hai jo sajeeva nu nirjeeva to alag kardi hai. Paav, ik jeev to una varge duje jeeva da banna hi sajeeva nu nirjeeva to alag karda hai. Sexual reproduction which बहुत सारे organs, ducts अते glands इस दे कम नू smooth चलाउन वास्ते शामिल होंदे हन। अज असी male reproductive system बारे बहुत कुछ जानिया है। आओ, हुन मुख पहलुआ नू दहरा लईए। The testes are the essential sex organs or gonads in the male that serve to produce the male gametes known as sperms and the male sex hormone testosterone. There are certain male accessory ducts which act as passage as well as storage house during various stages of formation and maturation of sperms. Sperms are carried by vasa efferentia from the reti testis which open into the epididymus. After this, the vas deferens is the main sperm carrier duct. That is why it is also known as sperm duct. It extends from the epididymis in the scrotum. The two ejaculatory ducts receive sperms from the vas deferens and empties into the single urethra. Then there are certain glands which secrete certain fluids necessary to provide healthy medium to the sperms. These glands are seminal vesicle, prostate and bulbourethral or corpus glands. Seminal vesicles secrete viscous fluid which form main part of semen. Prostate gland lies at the base of bladder and its role is to provide alkaline medium to the seminal fluid. There is another set of glands, bulbourethral or corpus glands lying at the base of penis. It secretes mucus which is lubricating in function. So this was all about the male reproductive system. Bachyo, male reproductive system bare padan to baad, tuhanu is bare changi tara jankari ho gai hovegi. Listen carefully and answer the following questions. The first question is, what is the function of Sertoli cells? Answer, Sertoli cells help in nourishment of developing sperms. The next question is, what is spermiogenesis? Answer, the process of transformation of spermatids into spermatozoa is known as spermiogenesis. The next question is, name the coiled tubule which is present just above testis. Answer. Each testis is surrounded by a coiled tubule known as epididymis. Next question. Which gland secretion helps in neutralizing acidity of the seminal fluid? Answer. Prostate gland secretion helps in neutralizing acidity of the seminal fluid. Next question. You have seen the structure of a full grown spermatozoan. Name the constituent parts of head of a spermatozoan. Answer. 
head of a spermatozoan is composed of acrosome and nucleus. Next question. From where does a spermatozoan get energy for its flagellar movement? The answer is midpiece composed of several mitochondria provides energy for flagellar movement. I am confident that all your doubts about the structure and function of each part of male reproductive system are clear. Looking forward for the next class. Thanks for your attention and see you next time.